Hey, I'm Coach David Bookman, and I got Knicks. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT. Ready, set, go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and are your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Chill. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, SLT Nation, to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. We're going out nationwide in all of our communities, and we're talking to rising stars who are doing big things and accomplishing what, KT? Let me hear it. Big dreams. Big dreams. And today, we don't get no bigger than Big Book. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We got AAU coach. We got University of Hartford alum, Fort Worth, Texas, Funky Town's very own and current head coach of Carrollton Creek View. Stand up. Let's give a round of applause to the newest member of the Sports Life Talk family, Coach David Bookman in the building. How you doing today, Coach? How you doing today, Coach? Man, I'm blessed and highly favored, man. Thank you for having me, man. Doing good. Right oh, now. oh, I love it. I love it. Anytime we can talk to a former boxer, you know, you, you, I'm just telling y'all better not approach us sideways in these streets, okay? We got we got hitters now. I'm nah, just telling I'm you. Good. I'm telling you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Hey, well, listen, if this is your first time checking out our show, hey, welcome to the show. Let's have a good time. Now, allow me to reintroduce myself. I am your host of Mouth of the South, B. Jones, a true Louisiana mister. Yeet is in the building, and I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, my partner in crime, the guru, the architect, Mr. Put Some Stank on it, the head coach, KT. Kev, how you living, fam? Man, everybody, if you're watching this show, I guarantee you're going to have a good time. You can book it. Ah, hey. temporary laid off. Good, good time. time. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, you know about Book Me? You remember Book Me? Man, I, got, I got called that in this little summer pro am up in Connecticut, man. Hey, and you put some hands on somebody. Time. No, no. <laughs> he called me Book Me the whole time. He's talking about Book Me for good times. Every time I did anything, score, rebound. <laughs> good dude up there in Hartford, Connecticut. Well, we going to call you good times here, man, because you are, we're about to have a good time. And I heard there's some things popping over there at Creek View that the world need to hear about. Listen, before we get to this amazing story, we got to pay the we got to pay the bills. Coach Bookman. All right. Check this out. If this is your first time watching the show, once again, thank you. We can really use your support. When I tell you 2023 has been a blessing, this thing is going crazy. It's going bananas. You are now officially getting your invitation to become a part of the Sports Life Talk family on the count of three in unison. In tradition, we need y'all to smash that subscribe button and smash that like button. You know why? Because it's free and it goes so far to helping our channel. Coach Book, is Creek View rocking with us? Man, we rocking with you all the way, man. All the Kevin, way. Put, put them double C's up. Put them double oh, C's up. up. All right. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three. Ooh, welcome yeah. to the Sports Life Talk family. If you just smashed that subscribe button, listen, around here we don't do fans. We don't we do don't. followers. We do family members. So now you are officially one of my play cousins. If y'all see me out in the streets, show me love. Give me a hug. Give me, pound me up. Because we can't folk now. And without further ado, big oh. book. Are you ready for the Sports Life Talk initiation, man? We got to take you through the burning sands, man. You got to go through the, the fire and crucible. And then oh, you get to go. He got to lock up. He got to lock, lock up. up. Oh, take All oh, right, let's go. All right, Coach, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Top five music artists? I say 
Can I name somebody that's uh that's dead? Yeah, this is your yeah. top five. Yeah. It's, it's your top, show. Top five, uh, automatically Tupac. Um, <laughs> number two, J. Cole. Uh, number three, um, Boosie. Uh, just how you know he raised a lot of us up. Uh, you know where I'm from. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wipe me down. Uh, yeah, come on, go. Hey, hey number, number four. I gotta I gotta have Drake just to throw in for the new school. And then number five, I gotta say Lauren Hill. And she might be number two. This yeah. might be one of the best. Top. That was an epic top five. Kevin, I, I your job is hard right now. Your job is hard right now. What you what you doing, Kevin? What you doing, KT? All right, all right, Coach. So we like to rank your top five. The highest you can get is five. And you've been watching the show. 2023 has been blessing us. So I I'm in a giving mood. Yes, sir. I'm not gonna lie, B. Jones. I know you rock with Boosie, but I really don't like Boosie that much. So I can't give him as many as I want. But <laughs> he said that he's been coaching for like eight, nine years, right? Yes, sir. It's my ninth year coaching. Oh, well, give him nine. Give him nine. Yes, sir. Got to hey, get it. And if you were to put somebody up besides Boosie, I'd get you 10. All right. So oh, who's your <laughs> Boosie Cole, man? He nah, all right. He all right. Boosie, Boosie, I just say that because he just he just keeps going, man. He uh he got us through some time. We were some teenagers, man, some young young cats, you know. So Thank you, coach. Thank you. Just, it, it was it was real. Yeah, when I heard him say Ninja, the way he said Ninja Turtle kind of threw me off. So I I never. Oh, yeah, I already know. I know how they go, man. They, no, we kind of sound different, man. You know how it is. I went up to Connecticut. They, they called me Texas every single day because I thought I was country. <laughs> I had like braids, tall tees, stars down jeans, Jordans. I thought I was clean. They were like, man, you gotta go put some clothes on you. You know, it's just how it is. And they was already wearing tight stuff up there, so they're pretty mm. cool, man. Mm. I, I brought Boosie. Oh. I brought all that stuff up there to them. That's what I'm about to say. How how many of these hip hop artists got their own house style name? Everybody want to get their boosty exactly. fade. So I'm just saying, K KT, come on, man. Yes. Put some spec on that man's name. <laughs> That's no. what it was. All right, so who is your favorite superhero and why? Man, I'll say Wolverine. Um, you know, just, just because he always, they would bounce back no matter what it was. Like, whatever he went through, he just bounced back from it. And he always had a good moral compass. Uh, well, even when it wasn't like he, it was a, not only the evolution of himself as a man, you know, over, over time and over the years, you know, he oh, he evolutionized his like his way of thinking, and then he you know he bounced back. So and then you know, he just that's just somebody I just always look up to, you know, and I, and I and I love I'm a Marvel guy, so that's just what I thought about this the first person on my head. Well, you know, coach. He was a pimp, too, so Wolverine was a pimp. So he had a lot of the, the Marvel characters. So you hey, he tell your business man. right now, Coach. Hey, hey man, he, I, ain't, I, ain't there, I ain't like that, but I mean, I respect the other stuff he doing, man. He's all good. He <laughs> hey, I'm going to say this about Wolverine. Say. about Wolverine. I'm going to say this about Wolverine, though. Wolverine had the ability to regenerate, but what people yes. overlook is that he still felt pain. So every yep. time he was taking the whoopings or he was getting stabbed yep. or he was getting beat up, he felt every lick exactly. and he still got back up and, that, and, and and that's back real enough. And that's, that's real, real life. life. Because you gonna feel it. You ain't. You can't run away from it. And he went straight towards it, even though he knew he was gonna feel it. Yep. You know, and he and he, and he still bounced back. So that's that's a real. So. All right, Logan. Thing. Since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? Man, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I just I gotta hear that set it off, man. My boosie, man. I'm <laughs> about to set it, it off in this. It ain't, it ain't, set it off. Nah, but it, it's that it's that set it off. But really, it's that set it off, man. And I, I had like a whole playlist full of theme music. Like this week, it was the craziest thing. You know, you know, winding down this season. You know, just trying to get through these last few weeks. And I had that. I was jamming that mini man. I've been jamming that that motivation. My, you talking uh, about Mini Man by Fifty Cent? Yeah, Mini Man. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I had a uh, playlist where, where I had uh, that Stay Scheming by Rick Ross. That's the hardest French <laughs> Montana place ever. <laughs> he said that he said, you just you going through it. When you going through it, you hear that. You know, you think you know, you think you got you know, a lot of situations going on. You just feel like that Stay Scheming, that Mini Man, and that motivation by Ti gonna get you get you through it. Yeah, that motivation yeah. hard. Yep. Yeah, okay. real hard. So mm -hmm. if you could if you could shadow anyone from a week, they could be either dead or alive, and you can learn from them. Who would it be and why? Man, um, truth be told, it'll be Malcolm X. By any like, means necessary. It, yeah. it, it, and 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 the really the really why? Because I just um like I feel like in this this society we live in, like not a lot of people give somebody like you know Malcolm X an opportunity to evolve. 
And like, I wanted to like know what like what was that spark? I know he went to prison, but like, what was it like when he evolved? And then like, what was his thought process when he reflected on his evolution? Because a lot of times, you know, that's what we do. We reflect a lot. We just be in our mind. He got to read. He got to write a book about it. You know, he got to do a lot of things. And then even even when as he was, it, it seemed like he was a constant evolution of himself. Because even when he evolved and everybody seen him what he was, he still kept trying to strive to get better and change. So it will be someone like Michael Max, man, just just off of the strength of that, man, that's probably the, um, the greatest evolution of a man that we probably have um, had in history. Yeah. Wow. We know, that, we know that he liked to fight and you a boxer too, so uh, you tell on yourself again, <laughs> coach. We never, we never really stopped fighting, to be honest. We fight for these kids. We fight for all these different type of things. You just got to have that, that passion and that, that dog in you to, to get through it when it gets real. No doubt. So if you hit that subscribe button and thinking about doing so, please do. Leave us your top five, your theme song, and your favorite superhero in our comments. On behalf of the SLT Nation, I want to welcome Coach to the family. So, B. Jones, take it away, brother. Well, I, I want to I wanna do some clarification because when he said motivation, I thought he was talking about that Kelly Rowland motivation. I was like, man, you, yeah. he's slipping some stuff in there. I'm like, hey, man, I need to, hey, I'm telling with a chick. I'm like, I don't want to mind listening to that Kelly Rowland. You see that little picture she put out? I said, hold on. Hey, 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 people slip on Kelly. Down. They slip on Kelly, man. Hey. It, it was a hard it trap. Really it just didn't blend, though. It, it just man. didn't blend with the other one. So hey. you can't go from man. Boosie to Kelly. Hey. Hey, hey, man. 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 Let me be sometimes your motivation. You <laughs> so sometimes when the chick, you hanging out with a chick, you never, you never know. She might want to hear some Boosie or some, or some uh, motivation. Hey, you me, never know. Mid-game. Mid-game, you got to make a job. Uh, uh, yeah, hey, you got to roll with the punches. You got to roll with the punches now. <laughs> Don't let it fool you now. Like You're going to have to roll with the punches. You got to. All right, good party, times. Man. Well, welcome <laughs> to the family, man. We super excited to have you on here. Uh, hey, I, 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 I was I was pretty impressed with your story. It, it could have went a lot of different directions, but you but you got here, right? And I know it's I man. know it's by grace. I know man. it's by grace, and I know you got something to impart. And you you you've made a living, or you've turned your your heartbreaks and your pains, and you've turned that into a living of mentoring and grooming the future and helping lead this next generation. And so. Let's take this thing back to the beginning, though. Let's let's take this thing back to Fort yes, Worth. You was coming up. When did you fall in love with the game of basketball? When did you start playing and and realize that you you had something special there when you put that rock in your hand? Well, I was terrible as a kid, but when I fell in love with basketball, man, my mama used to drop us off at the Hanley Rec because she used to work off of East Berry at the um, Maccabees. We stay in Meadowbrook uh, off of Hanley and Meadowbrook, and then she'd drop us off at that rec. And my brothers, they'd just go out the back door, go somewhere else different, and get into some trouble. And I just stay in the gym. We had this fireman. He was our he was our coach, and he just kept just you know, even when I was terrible, he might get on me or whatever. He still come pick me up. He still, hey, you know, put a basketball in my hand. You know, I was kind of big for my size, so I just the only thing I did was just run around. I don't know what I was doing, but I fell in love with just just doing that, doing something different than what I was seeing outside. So it was pretty it was pretty cool, man. And then I just I just started grinding through it, started liking it, started liking it. And then I started getting better and better just year by year, just by just somebody just picking me up when I was terrible. And then when I, I think, I, you know, we, we kind of like, we kind of say love, but you you like it. When I I think right. I really came, fell in love and I became obsessed with it, is when I was a sophomore in high school and I got cut from the JV team after thinking I used to love basketball and I thought I was the best player in our school. I thought I was like, I'm, I'm better than this guy, I'm better than that guy. And he was like, no, nah, you're not. You don't work hard, you got a bad attitude. Matter of fact, you shouldn't even be on varsity. Matter of fact, you don't used to be on JV. And he cut me. And then when he cut me, he cut me because I want to make my sprint. I was always coming up short, man. This other kid that was like my height, a little bit taller. And um, back then, it wasn't no transferring. Like I'm about to, I'm about to go home and call my mom and tell my mom. <laughs> that yeah. Me. She was like, she got, can she came home for a long day at work. She didn't want to hear none of that conversation about basketball. She didn't come to no games, none of that stuff. She ain't coming to go talk to no coach. He said, you in school? You got your grades right? That's all that matters. So then I went, so when I went home, man, I started having that, I was embarrassed because he put the list out. Back then you could put a whole list out of who made JV, who made varsity. You yeah. walking on me, you six, six, you ain't making no J. You what you didn't make J. I thought you say you was cold. And I thought I was too. You know, I'm dunking and doing all this stuff, but it wasn't about my how good I was. It's about my mentality. My mindset was messed up. You know, you know, you growing up in the um, household when you ain't got no father. You really don't know how to really react to like real coaching, real life, you know, like especially at that sophomore year. So, man, I got cut 
And man, all I did was he said, man, he's, uh, I just started running around. I was running around my neighborhood with a basketball. To, and, then he, and then he said, you ain't going to get back on the team until you can make this sprint. So I came up to him. I was like, man, I think I can make this sprint. He said, don't, come, don't try to make this sprint because if you don't make this sprint, you ain't going to make the team. So he said, I went back went back for another couple of days, started running around my neighborhood. You know, you a black person running around the neighborhood, they going to think you crazy because ain't nobody jogging yeah. like me. Just, you know what I'm saying? So I'm jogging. I'm big and everything. Next thing I know, I start losing weight. And uh, like just in a matter of a week, I just I just changed my mindset that I made them sprints. We used to have to run this Texas ladder like 5, 15, 22, 33, 45, 55, 110, and all the way back down. That was the hardest thing. Kids don't even know how to do that these days. They don't even run those no more. So, uh, <laughs> them kids are them kids hey, and you and, see, you know, and be careful, coach, because the coach out in, uh, in Rockwall, he fired. He got to let that. go for making them do push ups. So y'all, 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 push up. But I'm not going <laughs> to speak on it. But what I will say is, man, I came back, man. I, I wanted to talk about this so bad. Somebody, somebody tried to tell me, oh, them kids didn't come to this. You should make them do push ups. I said, man, do you see the news? <laughs> I'm about to stay away from all that right now. Like, but what I'm saying is, what's so crazy about that, man, is that the two guys that did get cut on their team my sophomore year, we got cut from JV. Well, matter of fact, I got back, we both made our sprints, and I was playing varsity six games later, like starting and like contributing, like on a, on a really good team. And it just took my mindset. And then these two, the two guys that you, you mentioned, we played Division One basketball, not just played Division One basketball, we graduated from a Division One basketball. Wow. Um, and like a lot of guys went, but they didn't last that long because they didn't have their, you know, their, 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 their you know, that wake up call right there. Like right, we right. We had that wake up call again. That's when I really felt, that's when I really knew I loved the game. Cause I didn't have nowhere to run to. And I just have to grind. I have to just become obsessed with it. So the, the same coach that cut me, he gave me a routine. And I stayed with that routine, even till I, when I was in college. And I stayed with that routine, and that routine got me paid. Like, it actually got me paid, and it was the craziest thing ever. And then and then eventually, that's how I, I, I ended up coaching his son on my very first team I ever coached in AU. That was a crazy 360, and he was just so proud of me. He let me use his gym for free. I was over there coaching my old my old kids and the old kids that went to Southwest. I kind of just started giving back and I did it for free. Um, after I got done boxing, but it was just I don't want to get too ahead of that. But that was a crazy situation, man. So that's when I think I really fell in love with basketball was when I was a sophomore. I've been around this since I was eight, but I fell in love with it and I became obsessed with it when I was a sophomore. This took me from being a no name kid that had no club, no nothing, nobody tried to give me nothing to actually getting a scholarship to play four years at a university. So that's just how life changed and like. Like that quick. Well, I tell you what, Coach, you kind of took me down another uh, another avenue because I, I want to talk about this uh, and I want to unpack that a little bit more because you 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 are old school coach, you're old school guy, but you you just mentioned how you had to adapt and change some ways. Like me personally, I, I I'm scared to death of of how you can even reprimand a kid, and I, you know the the, oh, the the transfer portal is like a topic, and it was so many kids that was in that transfer portal. They don't they don't put that across the SBN. They don't say oh, yeah. hey nine thousand eight hundred seven seven kids was left in the portal but you just said it like hey you you had no other choice you were back was in the corner you had a choice the only two choice you had was either get strong get better or or, or go home and, and be quick that was it and it made you a man like what, what are your thoughts about you know how do you coach in that environment to where you had to pick that that life alter a moment and you can't coach to that way it, and it's, it's still a struggle for me to this day because you know i'm moving from different areas of this uh, of the, the you know of the metroplex and it's different struggles. So when you coming in and you're trying to sh- change your culture, you're trying to shift things, and you only been grinding. You only know you know what it work. You know what works work, and that's work. That's that grind, and that's that getting over adversity. You know what I'm saying? And that now it's harder because I was watching. I went to I went to some practices. This I went on a road trip with one of my old coaches, and we went to go see Bill Self coach. And I was like, I see why that transfer boy. He ain't no he ain't no joke. He one of the best coaches you are gonna see. And he gonna tell you the truth. He don't care if you're all American. He don't care if you're the best player. And that's how we, I've coached that way since I was at North Crowley. And then I was at Legacy. But I had my coach, my, the coach I coached for, oh, he was a straight dog, Coach Mitchell. So he was like, but they, <laughs> but they loved it. The kids loved it because they seen the transformation. They seen like, man, if you just grind it out, you can you can get somewhere. So that's why all these kids that came through Legacy the last few, three, four years were unknown kids when they got the Legacy. But they end up being dogs by the time they left with TCU offers, all these kind of offers, because everybody, where these dudes come from? Because the 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 um the grind that was entrenched in those kids 
And they, they didn't like it at first. All them kids hated it. But then when they left, they appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? But it's hard to coach nowadays because you don't know what type of parents you're about to receive. Mm. You don't know what type of kids you're going to start with. You don't know the outlets they have around the school. Like they might have somebody they can go to to, to complain and, and, you know, and moan and groan and it'll be all right. You know, you, you know, all this type of stuff. But then they got different things they can go to as far as playing video games. They can just be a kid, you know. And nowadays, a lot of kids just don't realize they don't want it like they, they like the other dudes used to, you know. And then some of them need to re, need to have the realization of that they do want it, but they just not allowed to because there's so many people trying to trying to like guide them through life instead of instead of being a coach. They're being cheerleaders out here. So it's so many cheerleaders out here yeah. because they either want to recruit the kid, they want to they want to get the kid to transfer. They want to. They want to get the kid to um buy into what they want to do, their agenda, and they don't just want to let that kid get through it. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you just gotta let kids go through it. Like go through the grind, take some losses, um, build, learn how to how to grow up, learn how to uh, like you know deal with adversity and like situations instead of you making that excuse or you putting something to somebody's head to say, oh, this is the reason why it is. Instead of saying, man, you know what? I just gotta get through it, man, and grind, but. That's the hard part. That's the probably the most the hardest part of coaching right now is that you know your heart's in it, you know what works, you've been around success, but not a lot of people have been around it. And not a lot of people want to go through it. You know what I'm well, saying? Coach, and then, and then it's so easy to just transfer and leave it alone. Well, coach, you got a very unique perspective. One that I respect at a highest level. And I got to talk a little bit about it because I'm a huge fan. Those who watch our Wednesday night show, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, we stream live on right. YouTube. They right. they know that B. Jones is watching boxing, UFC, MMA. Right. I, 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 it's crazy. I love it. I think it mm -hmm. is the biggest challenge for one man to walk into it. Now, you talk about getting right. through it. You talk yep. about adversity. Like, you're yeah. preparing for weeks on top yeah. of weeks to go yeah. into a square circle with another person who's got bad yeah. intentions for you. They want to do yeah. bad by you, and you got to face your own fears, yeah. and you got to face your own giant, and you got to climb through those ropes and do that thing. What, what do you think the boxing aspect, how, you, do you think that had kind of an impression on your, your way of viewing things? It had, a huge, it had a huge impression, and if I want to last the first day, I want to last the first day if it wasn't for everything I've been through. Like If, you, if I'm looking at my journal, if the evolution of myself, I think everything I've done up until now has got me prepared for what I'm going through right now and what I'm doing with my purpose. So what I'll say is that boxing thing and boxing, you're gonna get punched in the mouth day one. On somebody, it don't matter if you winning or not, you can be you can be having somebody know busted up. Yo, you gonna feel the pain. Like you gonna get through it. So I remember my very first time in the ring, it's my it's my one of my best friends that um, he died um, recently, um, about three years ago. But one of my best friends, we used to Live together, eat together, go to go go shopping together, hang out, get at chicks together, everything. And we got in the ring together. They teach us our foundation. They teach us your footwork. They teach you how to guard yourself. Then they put you in the ring, right? And literally, we get in the ring. This is, this is in Los Angeles, California. We get in the ring. He's a former linebacker, all American. I'm talking about cold, light skin, like genuine, but he's swole. So he he getting all the girls, he's whipping people. So he like, I'm like, he, it's crazy. I'm telling you, I'm not even making this story up. Like, if anybody watches this, they can be like, that's Chris right there, all the way. So Chris, <laughs> he get in the ring and everybody's around us. All the veterans, all the big time, Holyfield, everybody's around, everybody's around us, right? And literally, I, I swing first, I, I punch him. I hit him in his mouth and his nose, I just see his nose bleed, right? And man, it just felt like it was just like a bull. He just came out of nowhere and just started swinging on me. I'm over here trying to dodge, like I'm dodging bullets. He's just throwing them things at me. Hit me upside the head, all type of stuff. It's the first day, right? And it didn't go so well for me that day. I'm talking about it didn't go well. I'm moving around, you know, I don't know how to stick and move and stuff. But then the thing is, is that um, the very next day, I mean, not the very next day, the, the, when we get out the ring, everybody was around. It's like, hey, man, this is what you got to go through. You know, I, and that's when you know. Yeah. He's <laughs> he like, hey, man, this is your... But hey, when I showed up, <laughs> the day, you know, hey, when I showed up the next day, oh, I had all the respect in the world from everybody. I'm I had so much respect in every single person that respect. We still close friends to this day, going on vacation together, all that stuff. All them, um, I just got off the phone with my partner on um, Bo Champ. He got a fight in San Francisco. I, I got homeboys that's, that's fighting at the highest pro level, all that stuff, because we still cool to this day, because no matter what level you went through in boxing, if you get in that ring, that's that thing would change you, especially if you come back. You know what I'm saying? You grind it out every single day. So. 
it kind of that 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 kind of messed my perspective up because I feel like I can grind through anything now. I can get through it. I'm sorry, I don't care if it's a program that's been losing for years or a winning program. I don't care if it's a difficult child. I don't care if it's um, something that went on at home or something that goes on with my family. I feel like I just got to grind through it. And that's that's my mission, like, even to this day. And I just try to put that inside these kids, man. It's, it's, it's interesting these days, man, with these youngsters, man. Y'all be coach, surprised, coach. Man. Coach, what did Chris say to you when y'all got back to the apartment that, like, that night? <laughs> oh, man, we had to watch it. Oh, that ain't nothing. That ain't, I forgot to tell you. So we had to go sit down and watch the film. <laughs> so oh. we sit down. It's like, it's like Oklahoma Men's Society when he, he watched the film. And they, he, they say, what training? What training? You know what I'm saying? You know, LaTonsi mad. Like, he mad. He over here hating on him and stuff. It wasn't even that dope because we had, we had so much fun together. At first watching it, I was like, that ain't caught me with the right hand. I didn't fall, though. I caught, you know, I caught myself, you know, all that type of stuff. But, but every day we watch film with each other. We watch it. And I had to learn. I had to put my pride to the side, my ego to the side. And that taught me a valuable lesson, too. Because, man, I could have went off and just went a whole other direction and hated him. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. he made me so much better each and every day. That when I started winning it, it, it started, we started getting bond. We started getting closer because we both started to grind together. And that, that's, that's right. what it was about. So I can't even like, that's, that's real though. Like you just said, like you just said this. That shit, I mean, that stuff gets to you. We, we, <laughs> all right, coach. So I got to hit you off the cuff here because Kevin and I, yeah. we going out. If, if you, you got next, we coming to your game. Coaches, players, if you come on this show, we family. We coming out there to see you. Rain, yeah. sleet, or snow, we coming out. So Creekview, y'all get ready. Throw your C's up because we coming. But but with that being said, coach, the tr I, I went to a high school game and I was floored. I was baffled. These boys was looking like Bob Cousy and Boston Celtics in 1970, throwing the ball around at the top of the key. <laughs> and they kept the ball for like two minutes. I've never seen nothing like this. What is going on in the state of Texas without these shot clocks, coach? Come on, big man, book. Talk about it. Um, I, you know what it is? And truth be told, man, I've been in those meetings, those meetings with Texas, the Texas Coaches Association and everything. It's really about money. And about time, we really these days we can barely get people to do our, our clocks. We can bar mm. barely get people to do our books. I got I got messed out of a, I got messed out of a game this year because of the books. Somebody was on my books and on my my, my clock. To be true, be told, and I and I argued it down. But now we got to pay money. You got to pay money for the clock. You got to pay money for the book. You got to pay money for the scorekeeper. You I mean you got to pay money for somebody to handle the shot clock. So imagine right. how much money you got to spend on that. And then you got to you got to think about it. Um, most of these people that be going to go vote on this stuff. They are from small towns, right? And that's and the they can't afford play. it. No, nah, it ain't just they can't afford it, right? They from small towns and they play a, a slower, a slower pace, right? Gotcha. These are most of the people who are going to invest and and, and like and like go vote because a lot of us after we leave it after we leave that, uh, that 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 night, you know, the next morning when they do the voting and stuff, they already on the road. So not a lot of coaches from the inner city. Are going down and getting inside of these unions and getting inside of these these uh organizations where those changes could happen, you know? Because then you know I think about it, like we like to play fast, you know, in the inner city mostly, and it's some it's some places outside of the inner city that like to play fast as well. But the majority of the time, you got to realize that it's certain coaches that are not voting like they should and not being a part of things like they should because everybody think, hey man, we just got to go coach. X and O's, watch some film, go do all this thing. But there's so many things you got to do. You, you can't just go do camps. You just can't go coach. And that's the best thing about the dude I just worked for because he taught me that he was always a part of the TABC, this and that, all these different things. Or when they want to go vote and um, down there for that legislation to get passed, when we have a shot clock, it's not a lot of people that want to play fast down there voting for that. Or yeah, even vote for it. It was a school in Oklahoma. They it was the final score was four to two. It was an underdog Man, school. Was crazy. Yeah, oh, they, they the intentionally yes, it was, was four the to two. Four to two. Uh, the team nah, knew they, that they couldn't beat the other team. Not, they said we can't beat this other team straight two. up. We can't beat this team straight up. So we're gonna hold the ball as long as we can and minimize yeah. opportunities for the it was a crazy strategy. It made national news. But coach, let's 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 get this thing back on uh on, yes, on Creek View, right? So you got a big challenge ahead of yourself. Uh, what what uh, what what can we expect now? Is the season over for Creek View right now? Oh, uh, we uh, we have one more game. Um, we okay, play our tournament tomorrow. Is it is it playoffs or is it just a final season game? Man, it's the final season. It's my first time not being a part of a playoff team, in in, in six years. So okay. it's, 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 it's it's a little interesting, man. So I'm just uh, we just grinding it's a through process, it, but, coach. But it's it, a process. It is a process. 
And you yeah. got you to gotta understand, not a lot of people going to want to take those L's. Not a lot of people want to stay around for losses. Not a lot yeah. of people going to understand that we, we over here trying to grow this bamboo tree and we trying to do things that, you know, there's not very, you know, not very normal where I'm at right now. Right. And uh, the thing is, oftentimes when you lose, especially nowadays, because everybody thinks they can coach. Everybody, yes, especially yeah. when you lose. Fans, oh, everybody, everybody. Everybody's a better head coach. Everybody can do this better. Everybody <laughs> can do this better. You got people saying this. It's You're going to hear it all. So the thing is, what I got to say is about the preview is, is that I love the fact that we got some young kids that are buying into what we're trying to do. I love the fact that we got some young kids, not even just at the high school, at the middle school. Man, I remember taking a loss to Newman Smith the first time we played him, and it was like a culture shock. They got, we lost, we had 40 turnovers, 40 turnovers. I had never been a part of nothing like that in my life. And we went in there, we had a whole conversation. And, and the next day, the next two days, I think I had somebody call me. And it was like, man, um, it was a kid out of our feeder school. He's like, man, I don't care, coach, I don't care about none of that stuff, man. I, I believe in what you're trying to do, man. I'm coming to preview. And I, and I, want, I want to be a part of that. And it was just not, it ain't about the loss. It's about, like, what, what lessons are we trying to teach? How are we going to grind through this? How are we going to get better? Because you just can't go wake up one day and just be as good as the, the powerhouse of your district. You got to right. you gotta, you gotta grind through that. And the best thing about it is I got kids that are young, freshmen and sophomores. They want to grind through it. Because the second time we played Newman Smith, completely different game. They had a fight the entire time. We only turned the ball over 11 times. And then not only did we turn the ball over 11 times, we had the least amount of turnovers. We had the most offensive rebounds. We had the most steals. We had the most deflections. You know, that's that's completely different. Because the first time, man, they bullied us. You know, I was, I felt it. I was right. like, man, I ain't been. A, but the, the second time, the whole time, he was like, man, we got to do this. We got to do that. I said, man, don't worry about the name on their jersey. And then next thing you know, our kids just start fighting out. But then, you know, it's still always people that say, well, we should have won that game. And we should have did that. They don't understand. Like you said, they don't understand that we got next, but we're not there yet. Hey, you know it's a saying? process, Coach, and I'm going to tell you, after hearing your story, man, I, I know for a fact they couldn't have picked a better person to head up that program. Uh, uh, you, they need character. They need mentorship like what you offer, Carrollton Creek View. So who the administrators who made the decision, y'all made the right choice. Uh, right. Coach, I, I pray that you make the right choice. <laughs> Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show where Kevin and I, we go one-on-one, -on -one and you are now officially calling – all the shots and uh it, the rules are very simple have you ever played a game called would you rather before man i i, I want to learn how to i want, I want to do it i'm looking all forward right, to it. Well, it's, it's gonna be I simple so kevin and i both will make a pitch to you coach you, whichever one of those pitches you like or you think is most relatable to you you select it <laughs> when you do that that host gets a point okay yes, the sir. first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds all right and kevin is on a nice little streak here so i'm i know he over there feeling himself yeah I, I can see it right now you know he got he kind of got that Kel that travis kelsey swagger about himself right now he he had the audacity to wear the kansas city chiefs hat on this show right so so i know he's feeling good coach so i need you to remember who wearing that the black red and white all right I just I just want to yeah, bring that to yeah, your attention. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm wearing it too. Nice try, yeah, though. You, hey, you, can never, you, you can never lose bet no red, man. You never lose bet no red. Is. Man. There it is. I like KT. You know what I'm Kansas City? This is the sports life talk. Yeah. Right. All, right, All right, let's, let's go, go, KT. <laughs> Coach, would you rather have a shoe made by Nike named after you and the proceeds go to multiple basketball scholarships in your name or... Or would you rather have a trailblazing award named after you in which you get to find somebody that's kind of like that has a similar story to yourself and uh, it, it goes off for the rest of history. It's a legacy trophy. Even when you go and pass away, they're going to remember the David Bookman Trailblazer Award. I'd rather have the shoes, man. The awards are kind of, I, I, I think it's superficial. I'd rather have the shoes and then, you know, they can wear them, their proceeds go away and they just, and I, they didn't want to just have my name, you know, just won't have me just, you know, always at that trophy kind of stuff. I, Cause I, I don't really, I can't say, I can't kind of be real with you. I don't really get down with the trophy stuff. I, I don't know. I just, I just think I want to grind and then you running in them every single day. So that means you're going to have to grind in them. And that's mm. what I really respect the most. So I'd rather have you a know shoe. Yeah. I, you know what? I respect that. Still wrong. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> I go be right, I go lie, you know, you had me kind of worried, man, because you sold that one pretty good, man. That was 
I tried, man. I tried, man. Yeah, that was good. All right, so uh, round two. Would you rather host your own cooking show where you interview athletes and celebrities as they take you to their favorite places to eat in their hometowns or... Or have a YouTube uh, a basketball pickup series where you get to pick a celebrity... And you get to go up against professional athletes while kind of coaching and teaching the game of basketball and interviewing them all at the same time. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry about this, man. I'm going on that food channel, man. I like, I like, oh! to eat, man. <laughs> I like to eat, man. I, I coach enough, man. I be coaching enough. Sometimes I get, I go get some good food. I eat good. You know me. You know I like to eat good. Hmm. So man, man. rest in peace, Chris. But you should have hit him a couple of more times, man. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of stuff is that? I like to eat, man. Yeah, I mean, I like to eat, man. That's that, that no, nah, right. man. All right, so Christian, Christian the rock his bell a couple of more times for me. He, no. so he did, so man, just let that man. Let All right, live, so man. let me live, man. I'm gonna yeah, eat, man. I'm just messing with you, man. I'm just messing with you, God, dog, oh, coach. Man. All right, let's go. All right, coach. So we have a segment on our live show which you can watch Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central right here on this YouTube channel. And, and you know what? Don't come alone. Bring a friend. So we highlight some of the dopest shoes that are coming out. So for round three, Coach B. Jones will present present a shoe to you. I will present one. Whichever one you pick, that host gets the point. So if you can, give us a countdown from three, Coach. Three, two, one. Oh, got to get those. I got to get the I got to get the red and white ones. I got it. Oh, it is a clean sweep. Right, I like them. I like the red. Oh, B. Jones, I went upside your head this time. Uh, I rock with them black and red ones, but them red and white was icy, man. Yeah, you remember he said it's about that red earlier, B? Is that red? Cue my music. Cue my music. Not one, not two, but three times you got next champion. Look at my belt, B. Jones. There you go. Now I didn't got so crunk, I didn't mess my camera up. But anyway, oh. thank you so much, Coach. I couldn't have did this without you. B. Jones, can you carry on? He been, he been crying all week, Coach. He been crying about the, the producers had to throw him a bone. He been crying for the last two weeks about his options. And, ah, you changed this now. So he had to, he had to do it. All right. Only different story. Nice try, though. Let's all go. Right. Hey, look. Look. Your camera not working. God don't like ugly. All right, Coach <laughs> David. <laughs> All right, coach. <laughs> My camera not working. So the time, <laughs> no, mine the is time like show, fuzzy. His camera ain't working. Yeah, he fuzzy now. God, like, hey, can't even see him clearly no more. Coach, the title of the show right. is Sports Life Talks. You got next. All right. So this platform yeah, is right. all about what's coming up next. And now we rocking with you at Big Book fifteen eight one seven on Twitter. What does the future hold for you, coach? Man, right now, uh, we're going to go into our improvement season. Uh, we do. We have our last game. Then I go through my little exit interviews. I'm going out to a leadership conference um, hosted by um, a, the chairman of the leadership conference, my, uh, one of my best friends, um, Anthony St. Clair. He's over there. He's the head coach over there at um, Garden Lake View Centennial. And I'm doing that leadership conference for a few days. And then after that, <clears throat> I start planning. I'm planning one of the biggest events that ever happened in, in Carrollton ISD. And it's called the uh, Creek View March Mania, uh, Bigger Than Basketball. And we're having this event. It's going to be at my school. It's never been done before. I kind of like did a lot of things behind the scenes to try to get it, get it pushed through. But it actually got pushed through. Man, I went to this back to school bash um, by Trey, Texas. We put on um, over there and, um, at Crosby Rec. And it was all these great things happening. These kids playing like pickup. They had an MC, a live DJ at a, a parent university. They had a Zuma class. They had all these health screen. They giving away scholarships and all these different things. They had Paul Quinn there. They had all these different people there. I'm like, why y'all just can't do that in my school, my, my district? That's the type of stuff that I want to do to connect our community. So, man, I started going behind the scenes, reaching out to people. I met the mayor there. I met the uh, man, I met the, uh, one of the, the deputy superintendents. I met, I met all these different people. Then they was like, man, they with it. So then next thing I know, I started planning and organizing. And now we have it at our school, man. I, I, wanna, I, I definitely shared it on my Twitter already. But, man, we got so many different things. We're giving out scholarships. We're doing financial literacy courses online. We're doing um, we we got so many items going, and we got the we, we putting we putting the candy in the medicine um because we got the basketball tournament going on for the middle school and high school kids, and it's open to anybody. 
Um, but the, the coolest thing about it is, is just is going to be a lot of opportunities for people to just get out in our community and kind of know what we're all about. And then it also it connects our school districts and our school district, which is Carrollton, with our community. Because that's a lot of disconnect. And a lot of times they think it's a disconnect because it's closed. And be honest with you, like, let's be real. Like back in the day when we were, we were growing up, we always be able to get into a gym. We were always been able to. That's what got us away from the streets. Like, you know, as I'm growing up, I got two brothers in prison and I'm in high school. You know what I'm saying? One of my brothers was going to prison while I was going to high school, while I was going to college, get my scholarship. So I knew the power of just having a gym that's open. And then oftentimes we always got people that got red tape on by, oh, this gym can't be open for this reason, that reason. Right, well, right. Thing about it is, man, now we got something that's open for everybody. And then now it's it's gonna it's gonna be um advertising for our community, but then it shows a lot of people around it, like we can actually do this again. Like because back in the day, they used to have on block parties, there's all these different things going on to help kids out and did all these different things. Now we get to keep, teach kids how to sign up for grants. We get to teach kids how to go get scholarships. We get to give away scholarships. We get to um, get these kids having fun, turning up. They got a little step team coming in. We got all these little, uh, little you know, little side things going on. But we have vendors coming in. They want to invest in our school. They want to invest in our community. It's going to be something big for Carlson that they really don't, they really have of. And it was just me. Like, you know, one day I want to be an admin, but right now I just want to give back to the community. Like, I want to make sure when I first came into this thing, I said, I just don't want to leave a, a great place like Mansfield ISD and then come to Carlton and not, not try to influence it and not to make an impact besides just being a basketball coach. Because I feel like I've already been a part of enough winning. I have not already been a part of enough kids where they didn't got scholarships. I didn't prove that I can develop kids right. and all that stuff and I can be a part of a winning program. I want to make this. I want to bring that, that influence and that impact down here up north where, you know, we can actually strive and not just with the kids that got it. I want the kids that like me that didn't have, it, you know what I'm saying? And now we can put it all of it together because that's the best thing about this school district is that we got kids from all different walks of life and imagine connecting both sides. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the next, right. that's the next level of like education. Cause if you always talking about, we want to have education. We want to, we want to service all, well, let's really try to service all by doing this event. And then not only we do this event, if it goes right, everybody act right. Man, we can take this thing to another level and then do a back to school bash for the whole district and then get that's away right. back and get away shoes. You know, that's why we did it in, um, the, um, with um, Basketball Smiles. I work with this nonprofit organization I'm on a board for. We go to the Bahamas. We give out shoes. Yeah, we, we've had, we had Sam on the show. Yeah, we had Sam on the show. Oh, yeah. yeah Sam came on here. He was part of season two. He was part of season oh, yeah. two. Sam, one of them dudes, man, he was real. When we was in the, we was in the trenches. I'm talking about like, no, not no regular Obama. And I'm, you know me, and, and he know Sam would tell you about me. Like I like to be out there hanging out with the people. Like we went to the Jungle Loop Festival and all that stuff. <laughs> had a good time. You know when I, you know, and that's just somebody that just kind of that's another person, man. Like he make you want to just give more. You know, like, man, I don't think I'm doing enough. You know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of thing. He's gonna be there too. He's pulling up. So it'd be cool like that, like stuff like that, man. I know I talk a lot, but. But that's no, nah, we love it, man. Hey, this is a, this is entertainment, but it's a, it's a true story, right? But this is people that's, that's people what listening I got to me when they call. So let me ask you this question: mm-hmm. What can, can can Kevin and I just can we commentate one of the games? I just want to commentate the kids, oh, man, and, I want, and I, want, I want to set up a thing, and so we have us on a loudspeaker, so we can talk oh, trash. Oh, the kids oh, yeah. shooting. Oh, oh, yeah. I would love to do that, man. That's, and, that's and, and let need, us know. man. Like we used to have this stuff. We used to have people just want to come in and be a part of something like. Let's just do it, man. Let's just have this thing like lit. Like, let's just get it back to. Hey, where, well, where you got your mouth to the south and the head coach. We we there, man. If you need us, let us let us know. Let us know. We would have did this thing, man. I'm telling you, we would have did this thing like early in the year. Oh, y'all would have been anytime y'all want to go. We got one more game left, but then y'all can probably, man. To be honest with you, if y'all could, y'all can broadcast from that event. We got on um, March Man. There's gonna be some people there. We got some we famous got. celebrities gonna be there. We, we, we got, got man. Um, you got some celebrities, man. You want to pull up or something like that? You can go in there. You can have fun and joke with the kids. Do your own thing. And you can do a podcast from there. Hey, let's cool, do it, man. Let's yeah, do, it. do it. Up, man. It's the last Saturday of March, man. March 25th. We're doing everything. It's going to be a talk, carnival man. outside. We got, uh, man, we got all type of stuff going on, man. It's going to be pretty cool, man. Sign us up, Coach. Be coach David Bookman. Six six and all the splendor. Hey, you amazing man. I love your energy. I love I love your your confidence. I, I love your sacrifice. I love your story, brother. Your journey is crazy, and we could all learn something from you. Hey, Creek View, y'all got a special one. Coach David yep. Bookman, you got next sports like talk, man. I don't know. I, I love this show.
I love it. I wish I could just I turn it around. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna sit there and watch this episode because you dropped so many nuggets. Y'all, please lock in with us. I'm, I'm I'm begging you at this stage. Smash that subscribe button. It goes so far to helping this channel. We are so close to monetizing and really taking this thing to the next level. Being able to get guests like this is what makes us tick. It's what makes this operation go round. And the heat that's lined up. Oh my goodness. I'm telling y'all, buckle up because this thing is only about to get crazier and we need y'all support. So make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, share this episode and leave some comments below. Tell me how you feel about the show. I don't care if it's good, bad or indifferent. Tell me how you feel because we want to get out there in the community. We want to, we want to dap y'all up. If y'all see us, come show us some love because we family. Let's and don't do forget that. the last, the last shameless plug. If you, uh, uh every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We stream live on YouTube, so come be a part of that. And uh, and uh, it's, it's more than a sports show. It is sports. It is life. We creating a conversation. We creating community. We creating a culture. I promise you, it's a beautiful show. It's fun. It's funny. I roast Kevin half the time. But uh, y'all come kick it with us. But KT, three in a row. You feeling good about yourself? I ain't know you was paying off the guests before they came on, but all good. <laughs> come on, man. Man, shout Let's out go. to y'all, man. Y'all doing y'all thing, man. We need Thank you in our culture, man. We Thank you, man. So, yeah, B, whenever I, I when, whenever I win, I got to pay somebody off, right? This can never just be clean. I'm right? just saying, you know, y'all should have heard all the crying you know, over the last you know, week. Do, we man. had to check, yeah. we had to change <laughs> stuff up just so somebody could. It's okay. Come on, come on, KT. We close did, we didn't change it up for this show, but nice try. It's, hey, coach, thank you so man. much. Yeah, thank you so much for rocking with us, man. We really needed to hear your story. Whatever you need from us, man, let us know. We got your back, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. Cause we gonna set it off in this <laughs> set it <laughs> off. <laughs> hey, dog, creek you know, about dogs, man. Hey, creek about dogs. Creek View Sports Life Talk Nation. We love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You sure. got next. Craziest. I knew you had next Cause you always working You always grinding You're in your bag Cause you're always working Like in due time I just I knew you got next Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smash and goes. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk, got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, just a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah. You got next, yeah. I can feel it, oh. Just like me, you got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time, and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah, if you got next, if you got next, then you're just like me. If you got next, if you got next, yeah, if you got next, then you know where to be. I'm talking sports life, talking this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sports life, talking this.